we're gonna make this little portable power station. It's got a 16 or a 1500 watt pure sign inverter and then also a 100 amp hour lithium battery. Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck. Abundant, just chilling. So I am currently in Texas. You can see the grass is dead. It is very hot. I'm not wearing a shirt because it's just so dang hot. It's been in the 90s and 100s for a couple weeks now. And uh, normally, Texas is not the place you wanna spend summer when you're living in a van. However, I have a friend here in Texas that just bought 10 acres. And so I decided to hang out with him uh, for the summer and help him set up his farm. He's got solar. He has, uh, I think he said 11,000 watts of solar on the roof. And then on the back of the house, he has three big battery panels. So that's great. Um, if the grid goes down, it's been hot in Texas and they're already threatening about um, brownouts and blackouts and there's not enough energy, yada, yada. So the goal is what can we do to set ourselves up, to be prepared, to not have to be reliant upon the systems. I wanna show you guys how you can build your own simple, cost-effective off-grid electric system. But I just wanna show you uh, the products we're gonna be working with today. So this is the first product. It is, brand is A-L-F-F-A-A. -F -F -A -A. So I'm not sure how you pronounce that, maybe alpha. Uh, but this is a 1500 watt pure sign inverter. This is it, very simple setup. Uh, the way it works here, you have a connection for your negative and your positive uh, battery terminal, a couple cooling fans. And then on this side, uh, you have an on-off switch, you have two outlets and then two LCD displays. And so, oh, and then also two USB ports. And the thing we're gonna hook that up to is gonna be this battery here. And I'll show you guys the manual. It is a JITA JITA. JITA 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, deep cycle battery. We'll go ahead and turn it around. You guys can see the back of it. It is the LifePo 4 uh, battery chemistry. The reason I like the build your own systems um, buying your own battery, buying your own inverter, connecting everything, is that these systems are repairable and they're expandable. So if you guys buy like a Jackery, uh, that's all you get. You can't increase the capacity, you can't swap out components, that's it. If something goes wrong, usually the whole unit is bricked and then you have no unit and then you have to buy another one. I prefer to have stuff that I can work on myself, that I can replace the components and then I can expand it as I need to. This build is a little bit different. This isn't a traditional van install. I'm putting this onto a mobile cart. So what I actually need to do before I make the connections is I need to build, I'm gonna use some wood and I'm gonna build a little um, frame for this stuff to be mounted to. Here we are in the workspace. This is uh, kind of just a little garden shed, I guess is what you'd call it. I have this leftover drawer um, from my van. So this is just extra now, uh, but it's really nice wood, you know, from back two and a half years ago when wood wasn't so expensive. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure these pieces, see what I got, and then figure out how I can transform this drawer into a little tote for my battery inverter. And then one thing I will mention is um, on a project like this, just in general, I love to try to reuse as much as I can. Um, and obviously this is nice wood, so I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm gonna reuse the wood, but even the screws, um, you know, for what I'm building, I like to reuse the screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and save them and then repurpose them on the reconstruction. Here we are, battery box coming along nicely. Check that out, not bad for 20 minutes work. All right, here it is, check it out guys. There's the inverter box. We'll go ahead and load it up with the battery. Wow. 
like a glove. <laughs> so now the next move is we'll take it back in the guest house and we'll go ahead and get it wired up. All right, so here's the setup, guys. I have my one aught negative cable. It's black. Negative's always black. I have a red one aught that's for power. I have my ring terminals. And so the ring terminals will go on the battery and then also they'll go down here on the inverter. So one other thing I didn't really discuss too much is we have to add an inline fuse. The fuse goes between the, on the power side between the inverter and the battery. So if something happens or some kind of a short, um, something happens to the inverter, it will cut power and it will not damage the battery. So fuse holder, very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount that right here. And then the positive side will come up to here. It'll flow through the fuse. And then the other side will come out here and over onto the positive side of the terminal. So that's what I'll do now. And then we'll go ahead and start the wiring. I also have some heat shrink I'm gonna use just to make it pretty. And I have a heat gun as well. It'll let me shrink the heat tubing. And that's about it. The first step is you're gonna have your wire. It's gonna look like this most likely. And so you need to strip it down so that your uh, connector can fit over the end. This is your connector. And so you can see, if we hold them side by side, kind of how far the wire can go down into the barrel. So you can kind of just mark it with your finger, like about that is gonna be fine. And then the thing about this big wire is you're not really gonna find a tool to just easily, a hand tool to strip it. The way I do it is with a razor blade. And so what you wanna do is just make your mark and then basically you pull the razor blade just lightly uh, so that it pierces the insulation, but you don't want it to cut through the wire. So it's something that just over the years, I've got really good at it from practice, but basically you hold it like this, the blade against the insulation, and then you just spin the wire, right, rotate it, and then as you're rotating it, it's cutting through the insulation. So we get back and then you can see that spot where I cut it at, boom. So then you sliced it and now you can just pull that end piece off like this. And there you go, there's your bare copper wire. Here's the piece I cut off, nothing but a razor blade. And so sometimes when you cut the strip the wire and pull it away, it's, um, it's gonna have a bunch of little loose ends that just kind of go all over the place. So if you pull the wire and twist it, uh, the twisting action kind of compounds it and gets everything tightened up. So we'll go ahead and twist it. Now it's looking pretty legit. And then we'll take the connector and we'll slide it on. And you just wanna make sure that you pretty much get all the wires inside. There it is. And sometimes, like let's look at mine. So I did really good. You can see there's no copper showing. All the wires made it inside the tube. So we'll go ahead and crimp that. All right, guys, here is the Bad Mamma Jamma wire crimpers. Um, I love these guys. Again, this is a Temco Industrial Hydraulic Crimping Tool, TH006. And we'll put it in like that. And then if you crimp it, like about there, that's a pretty good spot push that back in. All right, so here we go. We're gonna roll with that. And I'm just squeezing the handle. And we're going down, we're getting tight. There I can feel it's getting snug. Push that wire back in. All right, now we're gonna go the rest of the way with it, crimp it down. Boom, there we go. All right, and then you can go all the way until the dot, the pieces are just barely touching. And then we'll go ahead and turn the handle to the left. That'll release it. There we go. And then there is our crimped wire. And look at that, look at that solid crimp. You can see the flat edges all around it. It's almost like a, you know, like a hexagon or something, but those are all the different crimp. The surfaces of the unit so that's a nice solid connection that you don't have to worry about that pulling off. So there we are, the positive side is connected. And then what we have to do is this one's gonna come up and it's gonna attach uh, to another fitting. 
that'll go right here. So we know that we need the wire to be about this long. This is a really cool cable cutter that I got. Again, working with this big cable, you kind of have to have all these specific tools because none of your regular wire cutters are gonna work for that super fat cable. So the way this guy works is it's really cool. It opens up like that. You put the cable in and then you lock this around it so you can fit a fat cable in there. And then you just squeeze it like this and it slowly ratchets around and it just cuts right through that cable. See that, how it goes like that? So this is the fitting, this is how it's gonna go. This is the cable. So we can see we need it to be about this long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the tool, close this little guy, snug it down like that, all right. And then we're just going to go ahead and start clicking it. And there we go. Look at that. It sawed through that cable. No problem. So now let's go ahead and do the heat shrink. And the idea of the heat shrink is just basically you want it covering this guy up into where it starts to change shape. And then you want it to come down maybe a half an inch onto the battery cable. And so what it's doing is it's just kind of helping lock everything in, uh, sealing it from moisture, and it's just kind of helping hold everything together as well. And then also it's just less surface area, um, you know, for anything to touch and, and, and spark off that. So we'll just go ahead and cut it like this. All right. So now we will... Uh, We'll slide the tubing over the top like that and we'll bring it down to about right there. So what we'll do is we'll start far away, we'll get close and then we'll spin it and you'll see it shrink. You can look at it and you can see how that took shape uh, it's very tight around the end. There's not a bunch of big gaps there. And so that's it. This, this side of the cable now is like officially sealed, ready to go. I got the other battery cable crimped up, the negative and the positive. So we'll go ahead and install these bad boys. Got the battery box with our inverter connected up like that. And then we'll go ahead and power it on really quick just to see how it looks. See what we're looking at. All right, there we go. So it shows me the battery voltage uh, is 13 volts. And then uh, on my 110 side, or on my, my outlets here, I have 110 volts output and zero, zero amps. So when I plug in a, a device to try to run it off this system, um, then it should show me how much amps are being consumed, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and charge the battery uh, overnight. I have a lithium ion battery trickle charger. So I'm gonna charge it overnight, make sure it's all gassed up, ready to go. And then I'll come back to you guys tomorrow and we'll do a little test. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to update you on the battery box. So I mentioned I was gonna charge it overnight. And so I have this device, it's the NOCO Genius 10. 
um, and it is a battery charger and maintainer. And so I went ahead and plugged this in. You just plug one end into the wall outlet and then you put a, a clip on each battery terminal. And, uh, and you can see here it has a setting for uh, lithium, 12 volt lithium. And this is the state of charge. So green shows that it's fully charged. When I put the battery chargers on last night, it was down at red. So it trickled up to green overnight. So now we know the battery is fully charged. And this is what I'm going to be using to recharge this battery um, battery box. Ultimately, I do want to set up a few solar panels outside and I'll set up a charge controller and then I'll be able to uh, recharge my battery that way. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this little battery maintainer. It's easy to do. And uh, this guest house is connected to the main Tesla solar system. So even though I'm plugged into an outlet, um, that is solar power. So here we are, got the battery box all finished, loading up on the cart. A lot of people will probably say, well, why don't you just use a battery Sawzall? And you totally could. This is a 100 amp hour battery. Uh, most of the battery powered Sawzalls have either a three or a five amp hour battery. So the capacity here is just way more. So, you know, you could, you could have this thing parked over by a tree and you could be cutting all day. You could use different tools. I mean, it's just, it's really about the capacity, you know, even, um, this, so this thing's 1280 watt hours. I was looking at the Jackery last night and I think the biggest one they have was like 580 watt hours. So that's still over less than half the capacity of what we have here in this DIY setup. So I think it's pretty badass. We're gonna go ahead and try it out. This is uh, this right here. This is the big pile of uh, vines and branches I cut down yesterday. Uh, a lot of it was just this little, like this type of stuff but there's a few big branches in here. So anyway, but the uh, all this stuff comes up and it, it grows in the trees and it chokes them out. So it's good to get it removed if you can. So uh, these are the ones I have left here. Uh, those guys are pretty gnarly. And uh, the little hand trimmers I was using, it's not enough to, to really cut those successfully. So we're gonna do that today with the Sawzall battery box. Here we are. Look at that, that entire patch got demoed out. I loaded those logs up on this little cart that I bought. That's why I wanted to have the cart and the battery pack removable. So you can transport the battery pack, then you can do work. The side of the battery, it still says output 111 volts and 13 volts on the battery side. So it's working good. The inverter is not hot. The fuse isn't hot. None of the connections are hot. Um, heat is a sign, and with electricity, heat can be a sign of a poor connection. A loose connection can create heat. So you never really want to feel any of your cables warm. Um, a little warm maybe, but not hot. So, so far so good. Everything's still tight and looking good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know um, what you would use this battery box for. Around your house, around your farm, uh, at the campsite, wherever you're at, at the job site, uh, let me know how something like this would be helpful to you. I'm curious to hear uh, what other people would want to do with one. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.